Welcome back to the DC Sports Guys. All right, we've talked about the Redskins today, NFL. Long segment about the Caps because the Caps are back in action. Kevin loves and talking about the Caps. I do. I will go on for way too long. If you don't stop me, that segment will just keep rolling further and further. Uh, now we are up. Uh, we're going to try and do Terps and baseball in this segment. We'll see how long the uh, how long we talk about the Terps. Sorry, we're not going to talk about the Terps very long. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I just want to say, um, I was not planning on watching the game yesterday because I was fearful that Georgia Tech was going to lay like 63 points on them. Well, they were averaging, I think, 51 points a game. Yes, they had the best, the best offense in the nation. And I thought they would literally run for 1,000 yards <laughs> against the Maryland defense. But, you know, give you know, give him credit. Give Todd Bradford credit. You know, he's taken a whole heap of criticism uh, his defense has so far this year. But they really, they really stepped up and slowed slowed Georgia Tech down enough that if the offense had been semi-competent what? Maryland uh, should have won this game what's going Danny O'Brien Danny was supposed yeah. to be the one yeah this is where this is where I'm going to start getting really depressed so I don't want to talk about it too much but yes he was supposed to be the one like you know ray of hope for this team yeah, it was like ray we of hope a bunch of question marks we lost yeah, Tory Smith one we don't know what's going on constant you know thing that you could rely on was like, oh, well, well at least we're going to have good quarterback play. I don't know about all the rest of the stuff. You know, we got new receivers and blah, 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 and coaches and defense and whatever, but at least Danny O'Brien will be good. I don't I don't know what's happened because he got benched. C.J. Brown came in and didn't really acquit himself that much better in the passing game, but he, Crazy can, fast. he, he can run. <laughs> doesn't look doesn't look super fast, but when he took off on that run, he was clearly the fastest even, guy on the field. Even while he was running, I think his stride is so long that long he doesn't strider, look. The yeah, Eric he, Dickerson. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's running that fast. Yeah, he but just, he, he just out- destroyed the, those DBs' <laughs> angles. Oh, pursuing everybody. him on the sideline. Yeah, he just ran past everybody. That was insane. So, yeah. so that's exciting. I so he throw the ball really worth a lick. He had some terrible passes. But maybe you have to switch to. I don't, what do we got? Quarter, I don't know. What's got up quarterback, with quarterback controversy now for the Terps? I think, I think you, you do. got a, some some sort of. I mean, uh, you have, questions and you, there, and you got to run a completely different type of offense, though, if you want to put C.J. Brown out there. I mean, you got to switch to some sort of option style offense. Yeah, I guy mean, with that he, speed and not a great arm, he could certainly have to do something like that. He right? can certainly still make the throws in in the screen the screen game, which is a big part of what. Uh, what Gary Crowton wants to do, um, but yeah, you have to throw in a lot more option, a lot more running plays for him, obviously. So there would be be some revamping that would have to go on there. But you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, part of me feels feels kind of good that Maryland didn't get destroyed, which is what I think a lot of people expected to happen. But then, yeah, then I go right back to well, you know, if the things that we expected to be good about this team were good. Then that's a game that we we should have won. If you get that kind of a performance, if you had told me, you know, after that first week of the season, and even even after the West Virginia game, even after the Temple game, if you just said the defense would be that good against anybody, I would give us a fair shot in any game, any team that we play this year. But the all I mean, the offense is just gone you know, right down right down the tubes since that first it's been a constant slowly dropping ever since that first drive against Miami. Yeah, the offense looked just incredible. Kept going down. And you know we thought the interception in the end zone and things like that in the first week, first two weeks, we thought you know his interceptions were, you know, just getting into the new system and those would go away. But yeah, I mean they would they were concerned enough that they weren't even really letting. They weren't letting him throw the ball. Danny O'Brien didn't yeah. even. He only got to throw the ball like six times. Yeah, and I always thought that O'Brien's, you know, his big strength was his his preparation and his decision making. That I felt like he was, you know, he was smarter than the defenses that were trying to stop him. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's any less smart of a guy. I think he's still a really smart guy, and he studies hard and he's prepared to go out there. But he's just not making. He's not making good decisions anymore. I mean, Franklin's the guy who brought him in. I mean, he obviously he was rookie of the eight, rookie of the year last year, and I mean, Franklin leaves, and it just looks like he's kind of he's kind of lost. 
all of a sudden. I don't know if it's – I didn't think it was going to be that big of a change for him. Uh, with the reads he needed to make and everything else, uh, I guess it is. I, d I don't know. Yeah, hey. I'm it's really – it's frustrating. It's crazy, crazy disappointing, depressing. You know, I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna think about it too much because, yeah, I mean, like we said, I thought, I thought that was gonna be he was gonna be like the next, the next great quarterback for Maryland. I mean, he was the next, the next Neil O'Donnell. <laughs> there were people I was listening to a post game show on the radio, and people are already talking about you know, is Danny O'Brien gonna have to transfer out of Maryland this year to save his college career? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't know what happened. He's obviously, you know, now things are going bad for him. So you know, his confidence takes a hit, which is a uh, you know that that plays a big part with with college kids. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's a big. It's a big, big old question mark now. Yeah, what's going for the, in for the rest? And not a very good time week. to have a question mark. Uh, you had, you know, we felt like the, uh, the Maryland had to have a good schedule coming in because their first two games out of the box were going to be tough ones. They were the two toughest games they were going to play uh, in, the, you know, in the ACC at least this year. So they had to come into, you know, last week and this week with a good record. But, you know, now they're 2-3 and three with a number 8 Clemson. And granted, they usually play Clemson close. Yeah, I would, I would say, yeah. They, in past years, they've always played Clemson tight and they've upset them a lot of times. But this maybe this is this might be a different Clemson team than what we're used to, which is usually lots of hype and no performance on the field. But they're actually, um, you know, getting get, they actually look quite impressive <laughs> on the field so far. And they took it to took it to Virginia Tech. Um, you know, they're they're thumping they're thumping some teams that they played. Yeah, I mean they they beat beat Auburn, beat Auburn, Florida State, Florida State, and Virginia Tech. They've They've beaten three ranked teams, and then they get, you know, they blow out Boston College, you know, what this past week. They're 6-0, and and it's not a soft 6-0. No, I, I, yeah, my world is, is flipped upside down. If, the, if the Clemson is going to be as good as everyone <laughs> expects them to be every year, they're actually going to turn those silly recruiting classes that they get every year into good teams on the field. The ACC is in trouble. Yeah, even Georgia Tech. I mean, Georgia Tech is... You know, put up. I mean, they're six and zero too. They don't have the resume that Clemson has at this point in time. Uh, you know, that they they kind of had the softer part of their schedule first. But you know, you got a couple teams in the ACC that are actually. I'm not sold on Georgia Tech yet, by the way. But you're right, yeah, Clemson have, could yeah, be the real. They deal. played a really really soft schedule oh. so far this year. But we'll see. They get um, they get Miami in a couple weeks, and then Clemson, and then Virginia Tech yeah. after that. So, and even Georgia at the end of the season for them, even though that's not a not yeah. ranked team, that's an SEC team. Yeah, yeah. and all, all that being said, I don't, I don't think anyone in the ACC ever has a truly difficult schedule because they have to play other ACC teams, teams <laughs> at the end of the day. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what's going with that. I'm I, I'm just as confused as you are because the one part of the team that I thought was going to be the place you could go to and go at least we have Danny O'Brien, that's now thrown out the window. And not even because of injury or anything. It's because he's kind of yeah. played himself out of the starting role. So yeah. So that will we'll see what uh, happens. That will that. be intriguing to watch. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we're combining Terps football with baseball in this segment. So we'll do uh, yeah the big we'll do a big switch there. Big switch. No real way to transition this, but uh, we'll go into baseball right now. Uh, probably let TJ take over for the most part here. But uh, you know we had since our last show at least we had the season come to an end and the playoffs start. Uh, we've had uh, you know we've had the whole division series since then, and the biggest stories coming out of that got to be uh, the Phillies and Yankees are are out. They're done. Uh, game, set, match on what everybody thought. You know, there were a lot of people who had question marks about the Yankees because of their rotation and if just pure hitting was enough to get them through the playoffs. Uh, but no one thought the Phillies were going to be out in round one. I, I don't. There's, there's not one person. Maybe some Cardinals f fanatics yes. had Philly being out in round one. Yeah, I was going to say, unless you were a Cardinals fan. nobody else had, had the Phillies being out in round one. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, they could and play the Yankees and Phillies. They could play a series right now in the state that they're in, and they're they'll have better ratings than the rest of the playoffs for baseball. Yeah, you mean yes? Play a game that means nothing, like the the Flint right. Michigan Mega Bowl. Yes, just they a, made, could make a up, made up game. They could make up their own trophy, and the Yankees and Phillies could go play right now. And will probably have. I, I I just imagined when both of those teams went out, 
of Major League Baseball, everybody in Major League Baseball's office just, you know, head in hand going, damn it. We thought the ratings last year were bad. I guess Detroit. Detroit has some pull. Detroit Detroit can get some some ca- cachet because they have yeah. the whole, you know, we're a recovering city kind of thing. And, and you know, d- Detroit still has, I mean, for the Midwest, I mean, it's still a big city, even though they're, reco- you know, obviously recovering city, but... Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. they're a t- they're a team that people people can get behind, and you know, and the Cardinals have a a really solid solid fan base in their own right, and Texas is you know Texas is Dallas, and people care seem to care about Dallas. For yeah, but some Texas reason. was in the World Series last year that brought I think the lowest rated World Series. You know, I, in, I, I'm just saying. Obviously, years. they're not they're not the Phillies and the Yankees. But I'm not going to watch. It. I'm still going to watch. Uh, uh, I'm still going to be interested in what's going on. What uh, do you want to start with the division series before I get to what's annoyed all what annoyed all Nats fans the other night? No, you, you go ahead. Go ahead. I want to hear this. What what, what, what did what you watch? You? Did you watch the Brewers Cardinals Cardinals game? I I did not watch it last. Oh, night. you didn't. So uh, <laughs> were you annoyed by the fact that all there were tons of Nationals all over the field that were not, producing for other teams? Just just one that just happened one. to hit the game winning hit. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Flush. Yeah, out there. It's just I was like, really, really anybody but this guy, anybody but him. He was such a, you know, he kind of got run out of town a little bit. And there's stories about that right now. How uh, we're not going to talk about the Nationals. He got run out today, of town because he sucked at baseball. He, su- he wasn't doing good. At, you know, he was there all training camp. They get rid of him. He goes to the Brewers. He all of a sudden fits personality wise apparently with everybody on the Brewers and. Everybody apparently loves him, but I guess winning will do that. You just if you're winning, everybody loves you. And then of course he's up to bat. He gets the game winning hit the other night. Uh you know. Against what is against Arizona to send them you know, to send them on into the series against the Cardinals. And uh yeah, it could have just been could have been anybody but that guy. For a Nets fan, it could have just been anybody but him. You know, if if you're still looking for stuff in the playoffs to love and hate. That is definitely a polarizing figure for no, at I, least baseball fans in this I, yeah. area. I mean, you can take, I guess, I don't know if you take comfort in this, or this probably angers you even more, but you just remember that, I, I guess, the um, the praise that he is still, he's still not worthy of the praise that he's getting. He was he, he was a part-time center fielder this year. He shared the position with Carlos Gomez. He still didn't put up you know, ridiculous numbers. He got... You know the numbers were a little bit more there this year because he had, you know, a great batting average on balls in play average, which is, you know, almost really luck when it's as high as his was this year. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. Good for good for him that he's fitting in and he he got a big hit. But I still, you know, you don't have to you do you don't have to buy into the hype, Kevin. Okay. Okay, <laughs> and then the Brewers. What the Brewers go on to win uh, the first game of the uh, NLCS? Yep, beat the Cardinals. Um, postponed. Texas Detroit postponed. Yes, till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Rain. The Detroit Detroit cannot escape the rain, no matter where they go. They go to no, New yeah, York. Yeah, they it rains first, all the time. Yeah, their game rained out against and New York then, as uh, well. Yeah, their first game against Texas. Huge rain delay. Verlander gets, you know, doesn't get to, you know, follow through for a uh, full outing again uh, due to rain. Uh, they lose the first game. Uh, where do you think this is going? I'm going to kind of turn it over to you now. Uh, you, you got the setup now. You got, you know, Tigers, Rangers. You got Cardinals, Brewers. Uh, how do you see this thing panning out from here on out? Detroit, you know, pulls out great series win against against New York where they're pitching, you know, their pitching really stepped up. I mean, you can't say enough about their pitching. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 yeah. They clearly they clearly had more pitching than the Yankees do because every team has more pitching than the Yankees did and I think that yeah, that's what really that's what really came to the forefront in that series, especially when, you know, good pitching it, it doesn't really slump and I think the Yankees' problem was they ran into Unless a stretch where, what's that? Unless you're the Phillies. I, I said they, they didn't, they didn't really, really pitch. They didn't really pitch that bad in that series. Yeah, the Cardinals just got r- ridiculous pitching. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Look at you. Look at the deciding well, Carpenter game. Carpenter won the last game. Won nothing. It was one nothing Complete against Roy. Shot. Yeah, Holiday pitched great. Carpenter threw the game of his life. So, 
Yeah, it was the, yeah, the Yankees' problem was you know all their big, all their big guns decided to to take a break at the same time. Cano struggled, Teixeira struggled, obviously A Rod struggled. You know the guy the guy that was out there hitting the ball was Jorge Posada, who people didn't even think was going to be on the postseason <laughs> roster. You know, going on towards the end of the season. So, and then of course A Rod's up there for the final out of the Yankee season, right? Yeah, again, right? Nope. Wasn't he? Wasn't he there uh, last year as well? Was he the final out? I, don't, I, I think I, he. I, I don't remember that, but yeah, fitting spot for uh, yeah. The so most always guys, guy on the team to be in. Always good to see the Yankees. The Yankees lose. Good to see A Rod struggle. You know, Derek Jeter struggled as well. Um, of course, no one will speak a bad word about him in New York because he's mayor, mayor for life up there. But uh, yeah. Great, great, great that the Yankees are out. Not, not so happy for Major League Baseball if the Yankees are out because that's you know one quarter of the country just turned turned their TVs off. But uh, yeah, I, I still, despite the Cardinals beating the Phillies, I still flex as to how how they did it. Obviously, they did it pitching. They did it with with timely hitting, like all the all the cliches. That you talk about, but I'm, I still look at that team and I'm like, really, like, Chris Carter, like who is, who's, he had a solid year, but he wasn't, wasn't that even that great in his start. The guy that I think, you know, was supposed to be the lead man in this rotation, has been done for the season for five months in Adam Wainwright. And I think it's, I think it's a bad time for. Uh for the Phillies to go into a hitting slump. Yeah. I think that's kind of what you're looking at. And they were kind of, I mean, I guess now that, you you know, hindsight being 2020, you mo- you almost kind of saw this coming into the end of the season. I mean, they got swept by the Nats, you know, the week leading up to this series, you know, where the Nats pitchers were looking, were having some of their best outings they ever had against the Phillies. And the Phillies really only sat, you know, Starters were, you know, they they sat maybe a starter here and there throughout that four game series, but it was really only the first game where they held a bunch of guys out. The last three games of that series, it was maybe a guy here, maybe a guy there, but you know, they it, resting guys, but they weren't getting any hitting even against you know the Nats lineup that the Nats were throwing out there, which is all, you know, a bunch of rookies basically. We're going out there against the Phillies, and you look at that and you go, well, may, maybe there was a prelude to this. They did go to five games. And I think a lot of people are like, you know, you play 162 games. Why is it just a five-game series yeah, in round one? That's that's exactly what I was going to yeah. talk about next is that, that I think that plays a big part in it, especially with the Phillies. You know, they put their ace out there in game one, and he has a subpar outing for him. He doesn't get back. Uh, yeah, and yeah, then well, you're, you're in, yeah. you're in a, <laughs> an even bigger hole because you're down 1-0 and you threw, you know, you threw your best guy out there already. And, the, you know, the Phillies should have – multiple best guys because that was the whole point of them yeah. signing all these great pitchers but then you Cliff Lee lays a dud as well and you don't have you don't have the time to make it up. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole stretch of the season is you have this five pitcher rotation, you break it down to basically a three or four pitcher rotation depending on how toppy heavy your staff is going into the playoffs just to try and win games and you know everything kind of gets turned on its head. I think it's weird that you have a five-game series, and then you move to a seven-game series. I it's think all it it's all just in the interest of getting it done <laughs> in time, which is why it's preposterous. Just play less games. No one's going to care yeah, if you play less games I agree. during the season. You sh- shorten the regular season, and now you know they're talking about they want to add a whole another round that would only be three games. That's uh, absurd. That's even more ridiculous. You that's already like saw you- that. Yes, there's there's exceptions to every rule, and you know, given a big enough sample size, I think. The Phillies probably beat the Cardinals all all the time if you take it out far enough, because they have they just, that rotation will eventually overwhelm you. But they just caught them at the right time. A couple guys had bad games, and then like that, it's over. Yeah, I think I just think the playoffs it should be the same number again. I know the I think the NBA used to do a five game thing, and they they yeah they switched to make it all seven. Hockey's always been. Seven. I think seven. I think seven. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's only it's only five because in the interest of they want the season to be over before October. Yeah, the ends. season goes so freaking long. But why do we need? I, I don't know why you baseball know. needs 162 games. I don't know whose idea it was. 
why when they were back when it was 156 and like you know what we need to add six more games. Yeah, just make it 156. Probably the same. Probably the same people series. that are making decisions for the NFL now. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's all about money. You know, those six games I guess produce that much more money for every single franchise instead of just the teams that make the playoffs. That it's you know that big of a deal. But I mean, you have problems now. Uh, I mean, you have recurring problems on both ends of the schedule now for baseball all the time. You have teams in all over the United States, and you got games in the you know opening day where you have to wear a freaking winter coat and you know rain jacket, maybe snow boots, and then you have you have the World Series playing in almost the same situation, depending on who makes it. So you know at the beginning of the series maybe not so bad, but I mean it's so packed to where it is now that the Nationals couldn't even make up a game with the Dodgers. And you know they played one less game oh, yeah. than everybody else. And this we were year. we were talking about rainouts for the Tigers with the way it, the playoffs are now. They're so jammed together. If you start, you know, you start throwing up rainouts, and that completely yeah, and ruins. that's why they don't. And that's why they the don't that they have. And they try and get these games done like immediately. And that's why you play only one inning in New York when New York played Detroit because they're just hoping the weatherman's going to be wrong. They're like, well, we have to try and get this game in because now we're doing this every other night thing. So it's not, you know, you know, the end of October by the time we're done with this thing. And, uh, yeah, I think baseball needs to shorten the season. I mean, 162 games. I mean, I know you have to work out records and everything else like that, but I think for the sanity of the sport and to make the postseason, you know, a little bit more viable. Yeah, there's uh, – yeah. you got you to – especially if you want to do this, you know, add, a, you know, add another wild there's card. So many, there's so many ways that I would change – the whole the whole scheduling. I think it's just gotten it's just gotten worse over the years with how Major League Baseball does things. The only improvement they made this year was we said that they uh, they decided to end the the regular season on a weekday, where normally it ends on a Sunday, and so nobody ever cares about it because it's a Sunday with football. They decided to end it on a Wednesday this year, and you had the the whole crazy situation, which was you know the best thing that's happened for baseball and. You know, yeah. I guess since you know yeah. the Yankees, the Yankees and the Red well, Sox both, and the American both, Championship, yeah, both, uh, yeah, both leagues had teams trying to play themselves in or out, depending yeah. on how you look at it of the playoffs. But yeah, the whole the whole interleague play, I'm done with interleague play. They can get rid of that. The All Star Game determining home field advantage, get rid of that. The unbalanced schedule, so that you know the Orioles have to play the Yankees and the Red Sox 500 times every year. My wife's asking me like why why do why do they play the Red Sox so many times at the end of the season? I'm like that's the only time they can get it in. They you know they play them all at the beginning of the season then they have to take this break where they play interleague games, and cram those in and then it's like oh, you know they need to play all their teams in the division 50 more times so just, just shove them in at the end. You got to get it in. So yeah, the whole the whole scheduling with baseball is all nonsense. It's all messed up. It needs to be. It needs to be corrected. All right. So leaving out, who do you got right now? Who do you got making it out to the World Series out of out of these two? Uh, out of I mean, out of the league I, championship. <laughs> well, obviously, I I have a little a little peek in here. So Milwaukee's Milwaukee's up one game, and uh, Texas is up a game. So. It's gonna seem like I'm s s selling out here, but I'm gonna go with the two teams that are that have the lead in the series so far. But I think, you know, God's honest truth. That's who I would have picked before I knew the results. I'm actually from, I'm gonna go the with the game. I'm gonna go with the Brewers, uh, and then I'm gonna go with Detroit. Uh, I'm I'm going with the Brewers because uh, the, there's nothing you know, like you said before. There's nothing about the Cardinals where I go, you know. I mean, they got Albert Pujols, and that's great. They got Tony Larusa, who Lance. apparently is like the greatest postseason manager ever. Yeah, he could be. And you know what, Lance uh, Lance Berkman's good. I mean, and if he steps up and he does a great job sitting in that lineup, you know, right there behind Pujols, and you can't necessarily pitch around with Pujols. And they got yeah. I mean, that's that's a very solid part of the lineup. I just think the Brewers have the better overall pitching, and you know, they have just. I think their lineup might be a little. Uh, maybe the meat of their lineup doesn't match up to the meat of the lineup of the Cardinals. But overall, I think it's it, it, it's probably a draw. So I'm going to take the Brewers, and I'm taking Detroit just because I know Texas has good pitching, but I think Detroit really stepped up against the Yankees. I think they got the momentum. I know they lost game one, another crazy rain delay. 
But uh, I, I don't know. I, I, there's not much analytics I have about Detroit. I just got that feeling that Detroit's going to make it. Terrible okay. analysis, Great. but I just got that gut <laughs> feeling that Detroit's coming out coming out of the American League. All right. It's good. All right. And that brings us right up to 9 o'clock anyway. All right. So we're done. And we're done. We're done. Good work. <laughs> That's all we got today. Uh, what did we talk about? We had uh, Redskins. We had Redskins, NFL. Some NFL, the Caps. We talked about, well, yeah, talked plenty Kevin's about the Caps. Kevin's very excited. The Terps. And uh, we ended with baseball, some postseason baseball play. And that brings us right up to uh, to 9 o'clock. So, you think we missed anything today? You have any uh, comments, suggestions, criticisms? Send it on in to mailbag at dcsportsguys.com. You can also hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. It's all at www.dcsportsguys.com. That's all we have for today. So, for TJ, I'm Kevin McGrath saying, gentlemen, we're history.